Hey guys, we uh, we finally made it. We're at the last section of the animatronic eyeball program. Uh, if you've been following along, we've gone away from describing uh, how we build it, how the electronics work, um, and now we're to the code. And so what my plan is here is I had to write special code for you guys, so I'll take you through that code and run you through how to get it to work. And then if we have a little time at the end, I'll do a very generic breakdown of what the code is doing uh, to give you a better understanding of if you wanted to expand on the code or do your own. Um, so that's what we'll do. Um, and there's a couple things at the beginning. You gotta, the first time you run uh, any Adafruit products, you need to load some drivers. I will direct you to where to find them. But since I've already got it installed on my laptop, I'm not going to go uninstall everything and reinstall everything. Uh, but they have extremely good learning guides, so I'll link to all those down below uh, and show you where you need to go to get that running. As always, if there's any questions, you can always uh, get me on Twitter, and I'd be glad to answer them for you. So let's dive in and get this code running. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is get the Arduino interface. In order to get that, you go to arduino.cc. Go to Software, Downloads. Go down and get your Windows installer or your Mac installer or your Linux installer. Click on that. Uh, they ask for donations if you feel like donating to them. Uh, or you can just download it. Uh, go ahead and do that. And when you do that, and you should get a desktop app. And there you go. It won't have this in it, but it'll come up with this interface here. So that is step one. Okay, next we need to install the drivers for our feather card. So to do that, you go to adafruit.com. And up here, well, actually I'm here, but what you would do if you went to the, it happened to go to the right page, but this is what you'll see. You go to feather32u4 is the type of feather we're using and it's right here the basic proto so go ahead and click on that maybe scroll down you'll see under the learn section eight of feather 32 u4 basic proto so this is the entire learning guide for that card so under here they give you all the information you needed about the card and you can go to arduino ide setup so the first thing you need to do is download the latest release of arduino ide you did that already and then here's where you need to do some reading. So down here, you go into Preferences, a dialog box will pop up, and we'll need to add these boards to the board manager. So what you need to do is you need to take this link here, copy and paste it into Additional Boards Manager URLs. And it'll take you through the entire process here, but you wanna make sure that you add uh, the Arduino Feather 32U4 drivers, okay? So not a problem, just make sure you read this. And then using the Arduino IDE, so in here it shows you exactly what you need to do. So you would go to, let's see, uh, tools, board. So go to tools, board, board manager. Okay, so in your boards manager here, and it says under here, go to contributed, Go to Adafruit AVR. So Adafruit AVR boards, okay? Yours will have an install button. Mine's already installed. This installs the drivers for the 32U4. Go back here and then quit and reopen the Arduino IDE and make sure that under, when you reopen, you go under tools, board, then when you scroll down here, you get the Adafruit Feather 32U4 as an option to be able to program. Okay. And last but not least, uh, you need if you have a Windows PC, make sure you install the Adafruit drivers. So get those, go in here, and make sure that you pick the at least install the Feather 32U4. Install, and you're good to go. So that's going to install the 32U4 drivers to get going. The other thing we need to install is make sure we install the servo wing. 
that we have on top that drives the servos. So if we go back to the beginning, we can go in here and do, I believe, feather servo. And there it is, eight channel PWM servo wing. Click here. Let's see if we need to install anything. Same thing, scroll down under learn Adafruit eight channel PWM servo wing. Let's see, pinouts, assembly, stacking assembly using the Adafruit library, there you go. So under here, uh, to begin reading sensor data, you will need to install the PWM servo library code on our GitHub. So it takes you through the whole process. From the IDE, open up the library manager and type in Adafruit PWM to locate the library and click install. So that's manage library. So let's go through the file, uh, include library under sketch manage libraries and let's double check you want Adafruit PWM so it's there we go Adafruit PWM right there Adafruit PWM servo driver library I already have it installed I believe there's an install button over here uh, if you don't have it installed yet so go ahead and install that and you should be good to go. Let's make sure there's nothing else. And yeah, there's test code and everything. So uh, all you, I would close out and reopen the Arduino IDE after you install it, and you should be good to go. So let's run a quick test code on here and make sure that things are working the way they should be. Okay, so we're gonna load our first code into our Arduino 32U4 Feather. Uh, we're gonna plug in the micro USB here and we're gonna run it back to the PC, connect it. And in our Arduino IDE, once you do that, you should find out, it would help if I plugged it in. So plug it in, get to see it live and in person. There we go. Okay, so plug in 32U4. And under here, if you have 32U4 picked under port, you need to select the COM port that has the feather on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna load the blink code. So under here, I'm going to go to examples and basics and blink. Okay, here's the blink code. And we're gonna see if it'll program. It may not, but I wanna run it and see if it goes so I can show you an example of if it doesn't work, but let's see. So I may have to speed through this a little bit because it takes a little while to compile. Programming, done. Well, lucky, you should see. So you got your blink code running. Okay, so we know that we programmed this successfully. So now we know this card is working. So if you've gotten this far, you should be able to program any of the code that I give you. So first code we need to run. Let's let's get that done. Uh, well, first of all, power down card, and I'm going to put my servo shield or servo wing back on top. Okay. Okay. So step one when we're doing this is we're going to go file. I have it under read. Let's see. Open analog pot servo calibration. Okay. Now I can't stress this enough, guys. The first thing you guys have to do is on each of your eyeballs, disconnect the horns from the servo motors. So take these and just pop them off. Why? Because when they ship you the servos, you don't know what position those servos are in. So in this code, I have it set up so the servos go to a certain position. If your horn is in a different position than mine was, it's gonna still try to get there. It can bend the rods and do bad things. So I won't do it here, but you need to go in here and take these horns off, all of them and just have the servos there so when we run the code the servos will go to a known position and then we can go from there okay so now assuming you have all your servo horns disconnected from your servos uh, since all these servos are connected to the arduino what you don't want to do is you don't want to plug in your arduino via usb first because if you plug in your usb cable to your arduino you are trying to power six servos with the power from a USB port. That draws a lot of current. And what will happen is Windows will pop up and say things like, 
USB uh, current surge detected port has been shut down. It looks scary. It's not a big deal. It just means you didn't plug things in in the right order. If you plug in your USB first, you're, you're basically drawing too much current from the USB port. It shuts the port down. The only way I know to reset that is to reset your computer. It doesn't damage anything. It's just protecting itself from, from having any issues. What you want to do is make sure you have your high current power supply. So this one I have here from Adafruit is a 5 volt 4 amp power supply. Take that power supply, plug it in to your Arduino first. Okay. Now it's going to power the servos and then plug in your USB. Okay, so plug that in. There we go. So now we have analog pot servo calibration pulled up. Go to tools, make sure we have COM3 checked. Good. And we'll program it by hitting the upload button. And I may cut here because it may take a little while to compile. And it's uploaded. Okay. So I'm going to let's go and run the code and find out what it all means. Okay, so what we're what this code is really doing is we're calibrating the analog pots in your system. Remember we took the analog pot, you kind of positioned it in any orientation you wanted and you pressed it into your, your input device. Well, your analog pot may be in a different position than my analog pot. So I need to make sure that my numbers and your numbers all make the code work. So this first piece of code goes through and calibrates and finds out what your values are that you're using that we can use in the final code. So what we're going to do is make sure that our COM port selected, which it is, go up here to serial interface. So here we go. Max min input sensor calibration check. Move the joystick. Oop. Turn off auto scroll. There we go. Move the joystick to max and min limits in the X and Y directions and close and open the eyelid sensors so it's to its desired limits. Put on auto scroll. So what we're gonna do, hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna take the joystick, I'm gonna move it to the left, all the way to the left, all the way to the right, and then however far up I want to go, and however far down I want to go. Okay. Now look, in the in the serial output here, left right minimum is 583, left right maximum is 778. So those are your analog, it's a, uh, a 10 bit. Well, either way, it's uh, 0 to 1023 for your analog input. So this is my analog input for left and right uh, analog pot. This is my analog input values for my up and down pot. And then I can take my blink and open it and close it to as far as I want, to the extremes that I want. And notice blink min is 606 and blink max is 780. Yours is gonna be completely different, but the point is, is that it captured it. So that's step one. Okay, so now that we have the input limits, we're gonna go up to here, the serial input. You press C to continue and hit enter. Okay, now, Notice you heard the servos go. Your servo horn should not be hooked up yet, okay? Once you hear the servos reach a center point, you can go hook back up the servo horn. So what I want you to do is the servo horn should be roughly perpendicular, sorry, parallel to the servo. So the back one here, parallel to the servo body. The one underneath, it's gonna be hard to see, but the horn is parallel to the servo body. So if you were looking through this, the servo horn would be pointing this way. And notice the servo horn here is yeah, almost perpendicular here. Get it in this general area. We're going to calibrate it, but this is what we're looking for. So put your horns on there on both eyeballs if you made two. Okay, get this back on here. And let's go ahead and let's calibrate the servos. Okay. So dual eyeball offset adjust. Use A is left, W is up, S is right, Z is down to align the second eye to the first. If you're only doing one eyeball, you can skip through this part. Next, use E for eyelid up and X for eyelid down to match the first eyelid position. So we're trying to get this eyeball to match what this one currently looks like so that they're symmetrical. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and we're gonna use A, W, S, and Z, classic old school DOS gaming 
to go ahead and move the eyeball so that they line up. So you A, it's moving to the left, and about there. And then we're using Z to go down until it looks about square. Out there. Okay, so notice how this one matches this one now. Now we want to make sure the eyelids match, which is actually pretty close, but we'll do X to close the eyelids a little bit. Something like that. Okay, so this looks roughly similar to this. So now we're good to go. So on screen, it says press C to continue. Eyeball eyelid max limit test. So again, we're using A left, W up, S right, and Z down to move both eyeballs to their furthest extremes, left, right, up, and down. And then we're gonna use E to open and X to close the eyelid. So we're gonna to try to push the eye to its, its maximum limits and record those values. So let's do that. Let's do the eyeballs first. So let's use A to move them all the way to the left. And this will be as far left as they can go. Then you can use W to move them up. Okay, S to move them to the right. So we're looking for the farthest we can move them or we want to move them. Sorry, you have to do the letter and enter. It's just the way the serial input works. Okay, then we're gonna go Z down. You only have to do this once, so bear with me. Okay, that's so I've hit all four corners. I've done left and right, up and down. So now I'm gonna use E and X to close and open the eyelid. So let's do X to close. So you go until it reaches its limit, meaning it's fully closed. Like that, and use E open the eyelids until you get them to their maximum opening position that you want. So let's say that seems good. Okay, so note here we have the value for the blink servo max and min and what the current value is. So these are the servo values. So the value you send to the servo to make the eyes close all the way is 248 for this specific setup. To get them all the way open is 414. Same thing with left, right servo and up, down servo. These are the values, the maximum limits. So when you're happy with it, hit F to finalize and it should run through all the positions. Okay, so it went through and demoed the extremes of all the eye eyelids and eyeballs and where the posi maximum positions are. Now once that's done, note here on the code what it sent. A servo variable values. So we have servo blink max, servo blink min, servo left right max, servo left right min, servo up down max, servo up down min, and then the offsets, meaning that first part where we try to get the eyeballs to line up. Uh, these are the offsets for the up-down servos to make them match uh, both eyes, the left-right servos to make it the eyeballs to match left to right, and the servo uh, blink offset, which is how we got one eyelid to match the other eyelid. Uh, also, we have the input device variables. So remember, we have the analog input uh, values, the maximum and minimum values for each analog pot, the blink analog pots, the left-right analog joystick pots, and the up down analog joystick pots. So these are your values for your system. They will not match what mine are. And if they do, that's really scary. But for your specific setup, they should match. So what you need to do is take those values and maybe open up Notepad or your favorite text editor and just paste them in there for storage for later. So we've run the calibration code. Now let's go run the final code and go put in the values that we need and let's go make this thing run. Okay, so let's run the true eyeball demo code. So the code is called eyeball demo to be released. 
Uh, you'll pull it up, it'll look like this, and at the top I was nice enough to put only modify values in the define section below. Everything else, don't mess with it unless you don't want it to work or you want to expand upon it. But the only thing you should have to change in this program is in the define section. So if you scroll down here, modify these variables only. So these are all your limits. If you notice, I pull up our old text. Let me see if I can pull this over here. Yeah, let's put it here. All right, gotta remember that I'm up here somewhere. There we go. Okay. So if we go here, and I've already filled this out once, so it should be pretty close. So define left, right, minimum. I went minimum analog input value for the left, right pot. So I've described what all these are. So LR min. So we go look in the list that we had. LR min 583. Well, last time I did it was 582, but it's close enough. So you, in this case, you go in here, and put in 583. Up, down, minimum. Up, down, minimum, 479. 479. Blink min, 606, 607. Close enough. Okay? So you go through and fill out all these different variables here with the values that are here. And once you do that, you should be set to go. Note here also you can set the, the amount of time you want to record the eyeball movements. Right now I have it set for about 10 and a half seconds. I think if I did my math right, you get about a maximum of 160 seconds if you want to go that high. I think that's when you run out of memory. So for now, just leave it alone and uh, you'll be good to go. Okay, so let's upload that code. Make sure we're still COM3, which we are. Upload. Again, a uh, strong reminder to make sure that your uh, power supply is hooked up first before you do this. Okay, it's uploading. Okay, so let's go in here, press the green button. When that green light turns on, you can start recording. And if our limits are correct, it should begin to work. Wait for it. Open. Left, right, up, down, around. Left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down. And boom. Okay, green light turns off. And now it plays back exactly what I did. There you go, guys. You've completed the animatronic eyeball project. Um, I hope if you get to this point, you're as excited as I was when I first came up with it. Um, and I hope you learn a lot from it. I, the last part here, I want to give you a general overview of what the code does at a high level. Um, maybe just do a little whiteboard stuff here so you can understand what's going on and how this code generally works. If you can understand how the code generally works, you could expand upon it and add multiple servos and make your own talking Tiki or uh, Igor or whatever you want. You can have 19 servos running at the same time. It's not that hard once you understand the basics. So let me give you a high level of what's going on with this code. And if you have more specific questions, you can always ask me later, but at least get, you, get your juices flowing here and, and figure out what's going on. So let's talk about that. Hey guys, let me preface this with saying I'm not a coding person. I'm sure anybody who's a professional coder would look at this and have a small aneurysm, but it does work. So there's multiple ways to solve this problem. This is the way I chose to solve it don't need to go into the comments saying this is terrible code or whatever I know I'm not perfect so but let me take you through what how I solved it and if you want to rewrite the code have at it so there's two different sections in the code and all Arduino code that you need to know about there's void setup and there's one called void loop void setup is the section of the program where it runs stuff once so it runs the void setup section once and the loop is just what it sounds like. It runs it over and over and over and over again until you turn the power off. So what we're gonna do is we basically have the, since we wanna record the motions of the eyeballs once, we have it record everything in the setup section, and then we have it play it back over and over and over again in the loop section, okay? So if you note on the screen, right about here, here's the void setup section, okay? So we do some setup of the serial ports and start the fram, all good stuff. But here, here's where we get down to the, 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 the chunk of code that you're interested in. So I'm going to do it on a basic level. 
So if you don't have some sort of, not delay, but some kind of timer in the system, the micro runs extremely fast. So if you basically tell it, uh, start recording data points, it will record, I don't know what it is, but you know, a thousand data points a second. Don't quote me on that, but it's really fast. I believe it's a 16 megahertz processor. It's really fast. So you need to slow things down a little bit. So in this section up here, all we're doing is saying, okay, for the first memory location, let's take the millis, which is the current number of milliseconds since the board was powered on, subtract it from the previous milliseconds, and if it's greater than 15, then go into the code. So this is a way to slow things down. So basically, it's going to skip over everything in this if statement if 15 milliseconds hasn't passed. So every 15 milliseconds, it'll jump down into this if statement. That slows things down. So we're basically recording a data position every 15 milliseconds, which is more than fast enough to get nice smooth movement, but not so fast that we fill up the memory in about three seconds. Okay, so we go in here, and once you go in and it's greater than 15 milliseconds, take the current milliseconds and make it the previous. So the next time it comes around, we compare it to the current time and wait another 15 milliseconds. So this here is just setting up your memory locations, which is at the top. So one's for up down positions, one's for blink and one's for left, right. Don't worry about that. So in here, here we go. Let's take one of these. So what we're going to do is we have analog read lowercase and uppercase are very important okay so we're taking analog read and we're taking whatever value it reads from the analog pot and putting it into the variable left right sensor value okay so it's reading the left right pot and putting it in this variable Okay, it's doing it for the up, down, and the blink, but we'll just look at left, right, just to stay consistent. Down here, one of the commands that you need to know that was really useful is constrain, which when you use constrain, you put the variable that you want to constrain and the lower and upper limits of what you're trying to constrain and you're going to put that into your variable again. So, okay. So what's happening here is we're taking the analog value that coming in and saying, Hey, make sure that that analog value falls between LR min and LR max. Remember at the beginning of the code, you defined what these were. This is the lowest value it can be and the uppermost value it can be. This prevents falling outside of boundaries where you don't know what the value is. If you're expecting a value between 600 and 800 and LR sensor value comes in at 900, the code doesn't know what to do. And that does bad things. So if let's say LR sensor value is 801 and LR max is 800, then LR sensor value becomes 800. In the, on the other side, if, it, if LR min is 600, LR sensor value comes back at 550 then it's going to be 600 in here, whatever your lowest value is. And then in between, it'll be the, the value will stay the same. So if it's 600 to 800 and LR sensor value is 700, then LR sensor value is 700. It's basically putting upper and lower boundaries on your input variables to make sure things don't fall outside your expected areas. Okay. And we do that for all the different, uh, this over, all the different uh, inputs. So it's just repeated three times. Okay, next, another great command is map. Back in the day, I used to do linear interpolation on all this until I found the map command. So all you're gonna do here is basically map becomes your variable and then it's your lower and upper that we just defined. And then we're converting the value to the servo value. So the analog values we read in mean nothing to the servo pots. We need values that are meaningful to the servos. And remember, we called those servo LR max, servo LR min. So that's the maximum position of the servo and the minimum position of the servo. So we do min, and we'll do S for servo, 
and max servo. So this is basically linear interpolation. Okay, and we're going to put that into. Oh, no, that's sensor values. The servo variable. Okay, so what's it doing? So it's taking your analog in that you read in, say it's 700, and saying, okay, knowing that the low value, I think we used in our example 600 and 800, then we also know our, from our min and max servo, let me pull that up and see what that was. So we're doing left, right servo. So let me get those values that we actually calculated. Left, right, min, servo, left, right, min is 296. And max is 442. Okay, so what this is doing is saying, okay, take the variable. Let's say if it was, let's say the variable was 600. Okay, so from 600 to 800 is equivalent to 296 to 442. So if it reads in 600, then 600 is equal to 296. So your servo variable, oops, comes out to be 296. Okay. If you come in here and your variable reading in is 800, then 800 is equal to 442. So we're basically converting between the analog and the servo values. And it's all linear in between. So uh, if you picked 700 here, halfway between, then it would be the value that's halfway between 442 and 296. That would be what this value is. So it's a way to convert from one set of values to another. That's all it is. Map command, very important. It's a much easier way than having to write equations for linear interpolation. One line gets it all done. So if we continue on, let's see. So, okay, last step is we have the servo value. So the servo value, this 442, is, is important for running the servos. If you told the servo the number 442, it'll move to a known position. But in FRAM memory, it can only store an 8-bit number. So every memory location can store a value from 0 to 255. That is the largest 8-bit value you can store. So if we wanted to store the servo position of 442, you couldn't do it because the number's bigger. So we need to do one more interpolation. So we've got uh, this value here means something to the servo position, but it means nothing to FRAM. We need to do one more conversion so that the FRAM memory can store the, this value for you. And we use the map command one more time. So if we look at the map command here, it's exactly the same, but notice we're taking the servo value, we're taking left, right servo value min, left, right servo value max, and linear interpolating between 0 and 255. This is the exact same as before. So what if you happen to have 442, which is the maximum servo value last time, right? 442 is the maximum. So in the window here, we, this would be 442. Then in that case, we're at the high end of the servo, left, right, max. So that would be 255. Okay, so your, and that's called left, right, and I called it integer RAM, equals 255, okay? Now that value can be stored in FRAM, because that's a value between 0 and 255. So every value, every servo variable is converted to a number between 0 and 255, which is stored into RAM, okay? So we go down here, you do the exact same thing for up, down, and blink. So here, right here, so FRAM write 8 is write the 8-bit value to the memory location here. This is the memory location, so memory location 0 in the first one, left, right, int, RAM. So in this case, it's writing the value 255. Same thing, so memory location for up, down, which you would define at the beginning, put in the number from 0 to 255, which is equal to the servo position for the up, down servo. Same thing for blink. And then the last part is this is to move the servo because we want to record it, but we also want to move the eyeball to where it needs to be positioned. So 
go ahead and set the PWM for servo number zero, put it, uh, send out a PWM signal of left right servo value, which we went up here, that was our uh, 442 value, our uh, left right servo value, right? that's a known position, and then we just have a servo left right offset. So that was, remember in the, uh, when we did the calibration, that's just to make sure that the eyeballs are are, are square. You could, if you only had one eyeball, you could just do left right servo value, but we're just adding an offset value to make sure both servos line up. And note here, if you go down, so here's eyeball, here's the right eyeball, here's the left eyeball, servos five, six, and seven, and servos zero, one, and two. Okay. So it goes through and records the, until the memory is filled up or the time expires, basically that you said at the beginning, which is basically filling up memory, and stores all those FRAM values from 0 to 255 into FRAM. So once that's done, you're done recording. Okay, so you'll note here, digital right, 12 low. That means turn that, button, that green button light off. Turn that green button light off to know that we're done recording. Delay one second, just I wanted some time in between. And now, oops, we are in the loop section. So notice here, we have void loop. So this is the one that gets run over and over again. Okay. So in here, it's the exact same thing, but working in reverse. Okay. So let's take memory position zero, right? We'll go in here, wait for, so this looks familiar, wait for 15 milliseconds once we reach 15 milliseconds, go in here and take your memory location. Okay, so we're getting the, the memory location we want to read. And this is where it gets important. Fram read an 8-bit number from memory location this. So in this case, when you first go in, your first memory location is 0. Actually, it looks like it's going to be 1. doesn't matter. So memory location 1. Take that value and put it into LR into RAM. So now we're reading it back into the variable. Okay, so in, in our case, we wrote in 255. So now when we read it back, it's going to take that value and put 255 into LR into RAM. Okay, and if you look below, what are we doing? Taking that value LR into RAM, which is 255. So it's saying, here's my lower and upper limit, 0 to 255, and converting it into the servo min, left, right, minimum, and maximum. So we're linearly interpolating the 0 to 255 value into the servo value back to the way it was. So once we have the servo value, then we can go down here and take the servo value with the offset and move the, uh, do the PWM set. So this is sending that value out to the servos. So all the loop is doing is reading the fram, converting it to a, a known servo value, and sending it to the servo. That's it. And then we go increment. Okay. And down here we just have a counter that basically says uh, after we loop it three times, then go ahead and put it into a, a hold pattern. Uh, you don't have to. You could remove this uh, loop here and just have it keep repeating the same code over and over again. So the, the, the readback is actually very easy. So, but it uses the same thing. So in the loop, we're reading back the frame memory and converting it to the servo value. In the setup area, we're taking the analog pot value, converting it to a servo value so that we can position the servo correctly while we're running this. And then we convert it to a frame value between zero and 255 that we can store. That's all there is to the code. You just keep duplicating this over and over and over again, and you can run this all the time. So that is the basics of how that code works. I know it's a lot to throw at you all at once, especially if you're new to it. Um, I'm trying to give you different levels. So if you're just beginning, you can load the calibration code. And if you can load the code, get your values and just throw it into the program I gave you, you've got yourself an animatronic eyeball working system just for fun and you can stop there and just have fun with that. Um, the next level down, like I said, I'm trying to explain it um, that, in a way that would make sense, but it's going to take you some time to figure out probably what I just went through. Keep in mind what I just explained, I probably spent 
three, four months trying to figure out at least how to get that to run uh, when I was first starting out. Now it's trivial to me, but um, when you're first starting out, it's a lot. So don't let it get you frustrated. If you have questions, I'm glad to, to answer them. You know how to get a hold of me on Twitter. Uh, be glad to answer any questions you have or if you get stuck. Um, but that's the basics. My hope is, is that you can just load the calibration code. You can take those values, put it into the eyeball code and run it and just have fun with it. And hopefully that will get your brain juices flowing that you can take that and use it to program motions for any robot you want to make. You can make tiki birds. You could make it very simple that you want to do a motion over and over again. Um, it, it, you could Anything that you need servo motion out of memorized locations, this is how you can do it. Um, I, it's been a lot of work and I know a lot of people have been requesting it. So I hope that it, uh, I hope that you enjoyed the step-by-step -step process. I hope I was clear enough to get you at least through the process. Hopefully I didn't skip anything. Uh, every week I go back and say, did I mention all the things I needed to mention? Hopefully you can get through it. So if you're the first person to go and build one of these, let me know if you successfully get through it or if I need to make an addendum video to add a little bit to it. But, uh, yeah, this is this is what was this was an exciting project for me when I first figured it out. I hope it inspires people. I hope uh, kids and their parents maybe build some of these because, you know, Arduino is, is when you go and do an analog input and you put in the number two and it responds back, "Hello world" or something like that. That's that's fine, but you're getting motion here. You're recording. You're doing. You're getting a fun result, and I hope that that inspires a lot of people to try it or take it and run with it and make something amazing. Uh, maybe a six-foot tall tiki. Who knows? Uh, but I, I hope you enjoy it. I know I did. Um, this is probably going to wrap up this project for now. I've got a lot of other projects to get to that uh, maybe not as involved as this one, but uh, I've got some robots I want to build and some prints to do and I know that I've got a collaboration coming up with one of your favorites out there it's a little secret right now uh, but I had to get this one done and finished with so glad you stuck around if you made it through all the video and all the other videos I appreciate it um, contact me on Twitter if you get it successfully built or if you have trouble I'd be glad to help until next time guys uh, keep working at it and I hope you enjoy thanks